good afternoon. Welcome to my restaurant, Didi Grande. This is uh, my 25 seat restaurant in uh, Abu Juban that we just opened roughly three months ago. Please come in. Welcome to another episode of The Melanated Fuzz. My name is Ranzo and today we're joined by Richie. We are in his restaurant, Didi Grande, located in Azerbaijan in Tokyo. So we're going to get into his story today. He's been in Japan for over 22 years, a very, very long time. This is uh, our open kitchen system. Um, we have a chef, actually my chef is also from Ghana. Um, hello, Sim. Hello, my name is Sim. Nice to meet you all. Um, actually, it's, uh, it's a combination of uh, Italian and that of a steakhouse. Actually, the chef has been in a steakhouse for almost about 17 years, um, working in some of the top steakhouse restaurants like Benjamin, um, Steakhouse, Mountain Steakhouse, and um, of course, one of the best restaurants in Tokyo, Two Rooms. Um, he has been a head chef over there, and we just came out to open this place um, three months ago. We have um, our VIP section, we have our bar. Uh, our restaurant, this is a walk-in section also over here that you are always welcome. This is uh, a place whereby people can feel at home, come in, have a conversation with uh, the chef. We have our open kitchen that I quite recommend also. Um, our food is a combination of fine dining and a pretty casual restaurant also. Always welcome. My name is Richie. Um, I'm owner of Didi Grande. It's um, a mixture of a steakhouse and Italian um, in Azerbaijan. Um, it's uh, actually, I've been in Japan for a pretty long time. It's almost been about 22, 23 years now. So tell me, like, I know that you, you know, you've been in the restaurant business for a while, right? right? I met you in Tachikawa, right? right? At your former restaurant, right? right? So we're going to go and cover all that. But I want to start from the beginning. Right. Why Japan? So actually, I came to Japan 22 years ago okay. um, after I graduated from Ghana. I, I, I did building and construction. So my uncle happened to be in Japan. Okay. And he was like, after graduation, he was like, oh, well, why can't you come to Japan for further studies? Mm. So at the beginning, it was um, a Japanese language program that actually came, brought me to Japan. Okay. Yeah, and uh, in the middle of that, I, the first language program was just about six months. In the mm. middle of that, I became interested in the food and beverage in the industry. Okay, wait, so you weren't interested in food in Ghana? Before? Actually, Ghana wasn't interested. Okay, so you then when I came, here. Yeah, when I okay. came to Japan, I started doing part-time job in a, in, in a Japanese restaurant. It's called Otoya. Oh, oh Otoya. Yeah. Otoya. So I became. I became. <laughs> once I was then working in the kitchen as a kitchen help, I yeah. started developing interest in becoming more interested in the food industry. Actually, my mom used to run um, a guest house in Ghana. Okay. Okay. For okay. the Salvation Army. So. Mm. Uh, in one way or the other, food was always available because you need to run food for the guests and all those kinds. So it okay. became something like when I went to the kitchen in yeah. Otea, I became more interested in it and I was like, well, then let me just switch a little bit more into the food industry. And mm. since then, there's always been almost about 17 years now. 17 years? Yes, in the food industry. So you, right. start, you came to Japan, what, 1997? 1997. 97? Yep. Okay. So in December 97. Okay, so you started working at Otoya. Yep. When did you open your first restaurant? Uh, my first restaurant was in Tachikawa. That was 2015. Okay, okay. Um, I ran it for almost about one and a half year to two years. Mm. Um, it was quite a very big space and um, I just, the staffing issues and it was, it was too much. Mm. Finding new staff to refill and all those kind of things. So, um, lucky enough, I just happened to have a group of um, um, Lebanese uh, in Sri, Sri Lankans that were interested in buying. Mm -hmm. So we decided to sell the, it was a joint venture between me and my Indian friends. Okay. So we just decided to sell the pro, I mean the restaurant and uh, I, I moved up to a different place mm -hmm. to go and learn a little bit more for that was for almost two years. Mm -hmm. So um, December this year, 
2018, oh, I decided. Year. Yeah. Last year. December last December year. December last year, right. Mm -hmm. I decided to open uh, DT Grande. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. So I want, I want to get some more details um, with your backstory, right? From Otoya to the restaurant. Right. Right. That period of time, like what happened? Well, that period of time was quite an amazing. I mean, it was uh, a developing stage in life because um, I was, I came here at the age of 19, okay. 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And I was then developing, um, should I say, I was in the, in the process of growing. I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't have much experience in Ghana, um, especially my first job was in Japan. Mm -hmm. That was uh, my first job to get paid okay. was in Japan. So um, you go through a whole lot of process, I mean, trying to adjust to a different culture in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. Getting a little bit more matured. Uh, it, was, it was quite, it was quite an interesting. There were quite a lot of up and downs, um, things that you don't know. You meet different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was quite interesting. What was the most challenging thing you faced? The language. Okay. The language was one of the most challenging things because um, when I came in, I did a six-month Japanese language program. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of continuing because I was so busy with job and other things, I decided to drop out. And, um, okay. You go to so many different places, right? And um, the language be is become the most difficult part of it. Because especially when you go to a restaurant and you want to order something and mm -hmm. everything is in Japanese. And mm -hmm. by that time, now when you go to most restaurant, um, menus are in English and yeah. Japanese and even Korean. Okay. But doing those things, it wasn't like that. Mm. Everything is in Japanese. No Google Translate, no, no nothing. Man, so you had no help. Yes, it, it, was, it was really, really so. But, but it was quite challenging. And it's then that you develop the chances of, I mean, having to learn because mm. there's no alternative. Yes. So mm. you begin to learn the language, you begin to learn the culture. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it was quite um, an interesting moment. Okay, so how did you like, um, what methods did you employ to learn Japanese? Was it just listening to people? Were you just listening to people. Mm -hmm. um, by that time, they have a magazine called Hiragana Times. Okay. I'm not very sure why they, they're still doing it, mm. but Hiragana Times was one. It was, they normally have their program in both Japanese and English. Mm -hmm. It was um, a, a, like a magazine, and okay. they do both Japanese and English. I used to buy Hiragana almost every week, Hiragana okay. Times every week, mm -hmm. just to get a little bit more input, um, buying books, audio books, and um, especially French. French. Okay. I mean, a lot of Japanese friends also help out a lot. Okay. I know your Japanese is like fluent because ah, I hear you speaking. It it's sounds it's, very um, fluent to ma me. <laughs> it's, 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 um, yeah, it's, um, uh, the point is um, you live in a country for almost about 20 years, mm -hmm. right? And um, for me, mm -hmm. Japan is home now. Yeah. I spend most of my time here. Um, I'm married with two kids. Okay. Yeah, Japan is more home. It's more yeah. home. I mean, now that um, I have my own property, in um, yeah, in both uh, have my own house and uh, this restaurant and other thing. I think okay. Japan is home. Okay. Yeah. It is. You got your roots set. <laughs> yeah. The roots the root is set. settled here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's set. It's settled here. Man. Okay. Yeah. So your most the most challenging thing was the language, language. for you, right? Yeah. And then what was the procedure or the process to open your first restaurant? Like, when did you decide that you wanted to own a restaurant? In um, Japan? actually, um. Uh, for me, one thing that I've realized is the food industry, especially for we as um, black people, mm -hmm. as foreigners, mm -hmm. and uh, Japanese society in itself, the food industry is, is the food is a culture in okay. Japan, okay. right? And uh, what I made me to become more interested in the food industry is um, I was then working with Grand Hyatt. Okay. Um, I started uh, with um, um, Full time working in the food industry was uh, a Spanish restaurant, and okay. um, it was a new restaurant. And when I went in, the owner was very good with me. Within mm -hmm. a shorter period of um, one and a half year to two years, I became a manager over there. Okay. Um, and it was a restaurant in Ginza, and mm -hmm. in Ginza you have a whole lot of people. We have foreigners and Japanese people coming in, and people were very nice and. Everybody was like, Richie, Richie, Richie. Just of course, because um, probably I might be the only black person over okay. there, mm -hmm. and uh, probably the only guardian or okay. foreigner. Mm -hmm. So that really helped me a lot. So what I really made me to become a little bit more interested is, well, well so if people are treating me very well like this, mm -hmm. and the industry is not, it's not a bad industry, it's a, it's a multi-million dollar industry. Okay. So I was just like, Or multi-billion. Multi-billion. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, 
well, then I think it's better to take advantage of it. And okay. Then, yeah, yeah. So. so you had that mind, you had a business mind, you like business? Actually, it's, um, I did have a very good business mind okay. from the very beginning. And I, I realized that it is, it's, a, this, this, it's, it's a huge market. So I okay. wanted to tap into it. Mm -hmm. um, I started talking to people. Um, my first restaurant, for instance, as I said, in Tachikawa, mm -hmm. uh, where we met, yeah. um, it was a joint venture between me and Indian guys. Okay. Um, they did a hundred percent financing, mm -hmm. which was um, quite um, a boost because um, very much. Um, well, okay, I did my presentation and other things, and they were like, okay, we will get the money ready, mm -hmm. go and do it, and okay. which was very good experience. So. Um, yeah, and uh, even here too, for instance, as I said, joint venture between me and a Japanese uh, okay. sponsor. Mm -hmm. It gives you that kind of sense of uh, ability to yeah, go into your own businesses and other mm. things. Yeah, sometimes people do find any difficulties in talking in terms of joint ventures and okay. other things. But mm. for me as a starter mm -hmm. and for me as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I think it was quite good also in helping me to get established and get the base mm. of what I really want to do. What was the? What are some of the some of the challenges that people face in terms of partnerships that they might? Um, be of? In terms of partnership, I think one thing that people need to be a little bit more specific is, is um, mm. a little more. There should be a more intense discussion between the parties mm. because um, whenever things become quite casual and there's not much communication between the two parties, mm -hmm. that's where you have the difficulties coming in. Because okay. one, there might be some point where you're going to find some difficulties, especially within the next six months or probably one year. Mm -hmm. But in doing those difficult times, how does the communication, how was the initial communication? Mm -hmm. How was the initial agreement? And how do you handle those situations? Those are the things that I think people should be able to have a more detailed discussion when um, you go into a partnership, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so this restaurant now, uh, DD Grande, you yep. were telling me the definition, right? For DD in uh, um, Ghani, like, what, what's the language? It's, the... it's a Ghana, Ghanaian, Ghana, Ghana language. So, what do you call the language? What's the name of the um, language? It's called Akan. Akan, yeah, Akan so, in the sorry for cutting show, but Akan okay. DD means um, to eat, and in Japanese, it's called Mishiagare. Okay, okay. Mishiagare, and uh. What I did was um, actually with my team, we just, we had so many different names and we're like, okay, how do we come up? And okay, well, Didi, I'm a Ghanaian, Mishiagare, mm -hmm. which is a very good word in Japanese. Okay. Um, to eat mm -hmm. is a very good word in Japanese. And so we did, what we did was we add a little bit of Latin or probably in Italian, okay. the grande, which means mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. So it means in, in our language, it means uh, to eat big. Ipai okay. tabete, ipai ah. mishiagare. It's a combination of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what's your goal with Didi Grande? Um, actually, right. um, you opened recently, right? Yeah, we just opened about three months ago, okay. and um, um, we actually really want to go into um, franchises. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's um, the brand has already been established. Mm -hmm. We have a huge market. Um, the restaurant has been very, actually has been very successful, good for us for over the past three months. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're looking at um, expanding the businesses, especially within the community of Azabuju, Ban, Shimbashi, that is just within a, a period whereby you can be able to move all the staffs around within a, you have um, one base, mm -hmm. and uh, you can be able to move your staff within a period of 30 minutes to different area, because one, mm -hmm. um, there is a huge shortage of labor in Japan. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, so when you're going to such industry, which is very labor intensive, you mm -hmm. also have to have a strategy, and the strategy mm -hmm. is, um, if we're going to expand as we're looking at it, mm -hmm. we need to expand within a shorter period of, um, 30 minutes mm -hmm. whereby staff can be able to move around within bicycle, within, if it's in Japan. Okay. Yeah, but we're also looking at our franchises um, also in different countries and other things. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we are in the process of having discussion with um, other teams from outside mm -hmm. um, with my Japanese um, partner. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, what's the menu like? What type of food do you specialize in? Um, actually, we specialize in steak. Okay. Uh, my Steak. chef has been in the um, steak industry, including myself, mm -hmm. uh, have been in the steak industry for almost about 17 years. Um, okay. Grand Hyatt was in a steak restaurant, mm -hmm. um, two rooms, which is one of the most top restaurants in Japan. 
was okay. also a stick house, mm -hmm. uh, Ruby Jacks, which is mm -hmm. um, a fine dining stick house. So I spent most of the time in, in um, stick, Japanese means say niku. Okay. Yeah, and uh, myself to the same thing. So um, within the Italian, what actually brought in the Italian was uh, my just experience, uh, my experience within a certain period of time uh, around three years working in an um, Italian restaurant mm -hmm. because I wanted to learn a little bit more about how the Italian food to combine because I didn't want to do something that is available because we have so many steakhouses, we have so many Italian houses. Mm -hmm. So how can you be able to combine the two? Mm. Because when you go to a steakhouse, you don't get a very good pastas. I see. When you go to an Italian restaurant, you don't get a very good steak. Mm -hmm. So how do we combine the two? Mm. That made me to come up with the idea of combining the Italian and then the beef, the steakhouse. So actually our concept is um, steak mm -hmm. and then Italian. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a grill Italian. Okay. So what's the clientele like at your first restaurant in right. Tashikawa? Right. And this one, what's the clientele like? Um, actually, for even though Azabujiban is, um, is a multicultural area, we have all those embassies and uh, diplomatic corps around this area. Actually, for now, for the past three months, as we open, um, the clientele has been fully Japanese. Okay. It's been almost about 80% 80, 80 to 90% Japanese. Mm. Uh, in Tachikawa was 99% Japanese. The only, um, maybe 1% was from the US base because they had American base very close. Okay. So we were having clients from the base coming in, but most of our clients has really been Japanese. Mm. Yeah. What is it like um, running a restaurant and being the face as well? Right. right. Because the thing is like when, when I went to Tachikawa right. and I walked in, right. you were the face. Right. Right. So right. you greet the customers, right. Right? right? And you're not Japanese. Right. So what's the response like usually when people see um, you and you, you encounter them? Tell me about that. Well, actually, it's, 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 it's a combination of things. I mean, okay. yeah, there are some times when you meet customers, there are some customers who mm. walk in and they, they're very surprised to see probably a black person. Um, yeah. Just walk in, hello, konnichiwa, and um, yeah, there's, you, 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 sometimes you get some reactions, but mm. the point is, it's not, probably it's not in, from the negative point of view, mm. because my, the expectation of having um, a foreigner at the front there or yeah. at this, it's a combination of this, but it depends on how you take it. Mm. You know, how do you accept it? I mean, there might be some people when by, maybe if you breathe even, they might not respond, but you have to find the, the positive part of it. I mean, mm. how do you handle those kind of, and there's some people, by the time you have communication with them, talk to them and other things, they are thinking that everything changes, you know. So mm. well, it's, it's, it's really been good. Okay. For me, it's been very good. Because I remember the party too, like maybe if, if I can speak to you briefly, there were, there were most the Japanese people wishing you well when we were moving on to the Actually, next Actually, um, Tachika, Tachikawa was an amazing, I mean, it's um, really, um, it's one of the best experiences I've experienced in okay. Japan. Wow. It was people were extremely supportive. Mm. People were extremely, who mm. really, I'm sorry, I was, uh, my yeah, Japanese so, so, was, yeah, my Japanese was out. coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's, um, people has been very supportive. And yeah. even here, um, there are people that comes in, you have a, just a conversation with them, and um, mm. by the time you come, people send you uh, plants, okay. um, flowers, mm. Um, I've got some couple of flowers over here. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. There are people that I just met on the street here. Okay. Customers that just came in. And, you know, people have the, the willingness because probably maybe they know that as a foreigner, it might not be quite easy to okay. go mm -hmm. into that industry. So you have that kind of support from people, mm -hmm. which is very good. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes it depends on how our approach. Okay. How do we get to the people? How do we communicate with the people? It helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, it has been, for me, Japan has been, and the, and the people has been very supportive mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest challenge you faced in the restaurant industry so far? Um, the biggest challenge now has been the coronavirus. Okay. Okay, you have heard <laughs> yeah. that. It's and um, yeah, the, for the challenges, um, how do you keep up with the demand? Mm. Because in Japan, is uh, the food industry is 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 highly competitive. Okay, it's extremely competitive. So if you have such a very huge competitive market, mm -hmm. how do you keep up with your 
style in terms of presentation, in terms mm -hmm. of the quality of the food, mm -hmm. uh, services, how do you keep up? So mm -hmm. that is, has been, it's a constant pro process. I mean, you have to review your menu almost every, maximum every three months. Mm -hmm. You have to be there every single day to see to the services. Um, is especially for in our case, for instance, we just started. So, I mean, for the past almost three months, I have been here every day. Mm -hmm. You have to be there every day to see, even if you're day off, because you don't know who might walk in mm -hmm. until the business gets started. So, I mean, the, the biggest issue has been on how do you keep up with the demand? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you keep up with the completion? Because you always have to be ahead of that. Mm -hmm. So, otherwise, you're going to drop out because people are coming in. Mm -hmm. You have expectation. You have to think beyond the customer's expectation. Um, before they even come in for, that, for, the, for the food, I mean, what kind of product are you going to give to the people? Mm -hmm. Probably you have people, for example, in our case, for instance, we have people who have come here within the three-month period, come in almost about five or six times, and probably are they going to continue having the same menu? So you always have to then review your as programs and all those. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. quite, it's quite challenging, but... Mm -hmm. So it's more so about being competitive? Competitive. Okay. Competitiveness. I mean, it's, 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 you have okay. to be very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about your overall experience, like being a foreigner in Japan mm -hmm. for over two decades? Right. What has that been like? Earlier you spoke about, uh, it's about maybe just a person. Their, right. You know, their perception, mm -hmm. just, their response, the way they are, the, the, the interaction. Right. right. What's right. your experience? Um, for me, it has been very good. Mm -hmm. um, it has been very... There's some point is quite challenging, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's, it's, it's quite it's, it has been very good for me. It has been very, and I, I would say for me, mm -hmm. because it's just, it has been quite I mean good. Mm -hmm. because I take here as my home. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to live in your home, even in our own countries, you mm -hmm. have challenges, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to live in that particular place in a foreign land, mm -hmm. how do you have to? Or what do you have to do to make things more easier for you? Mm. And in Japan, probably it might be the language. Mm -hmm. It might be understanding their culture, getting a little bit more closer to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me, it has been very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what's one of the, I guess, the best experience you've had, right? Being a foreigner, a black man, an African in Japan so far. The best experience. Oh, something um, that blew your mind. Something that blew my mind was the first day when I. Um, this project, when I had a meeting with my partner, mm -hmm. it was, um, yeah, I just, we just, um, maybe you might not believe it, but it took me just um, less than 10 minutes to secure the necessary funds to start the project. Okay. Uh, I've known him for quite a long time, and um, yeah, I just like, this is what I want to do, this and this and this. I did my presentation, we had a conversation, and it was less than 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes to secure the necessary funds. So when I, when, when I was able to secure the, 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 the funds for, mm -hmm. for the project that I, was, I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I just sat down and I asked myself, I mean, he left. Mm -hmm. I, was, I just sat in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. After he left, I just had a coffee. And then I just asked myself, um, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, in Azabujuban, Japan, Azabujuban being one of the most expensive areas, in, in, apart from probably Ginza, mm. um, to secure that necessary funds for the project and other things was, 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 quite, was quite an amazing. Mm. It was, um, yeah. You know what's funny? One thing I've, I've noticed in some of the interviews I've conducted right. is the, the power of relationships and the necessity of relationships. Because I've seen that as a common mm. thread. Like people with like mm. really good relationships, mm. people assisted them and took them to another level. That's the point. So I've seen that. That's so the it's point. So it's about, uh, I guess, connecting with the community and the people. You know, um, connectivity. Mm. I mean, there are people that you meet for one day. You don't know, you don't know who the person is. Mm -hmm. You don't know who the person is. Yeah. I've had a chance to meet somebody that probably I might not be able to say on camera, mm -hmm. but I was, the person just walked in as a customer mm -hmm. and I was just having a conversation with him. That, yeah, we exchanged business card. I was so busy even, I didn't know where I put the business card. Yeah. 
And after a few minutes, the person sent me, after the next day, the person sent me a text message, you know, it's like, oh, thank you very much for blah, 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 blah. And uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happened to know the name, so I checked the name and uh, yeah. And I was, I was, I was shocked who that particular person was. Okay. And person keeps on giving you information on how to handle things, what to do, if you need any help in this, if you need, you know, it's, it's the matter of, I mean, getting that kind of connectivity. Mm -hmm. Because how do I meet you? Mm -hmm. We just met, yeah. you, you, you yeah, understand, we, right? It's, it's, um, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, so how do you get connected to the people? Mm -hmm. That is what's one thing that I, I, will, I, will, I will ask people uh, for my advice to mm -hmm. our fellow um, foreigners, um, black people or anything, mm -hmm. um, to be a little bit more, not to step back, mm -hmm. but to move, have a little bit of more conversation with a person. There might be some point you might disagree even from the same family. We do disagree, but mm -hmm. get a little bit more closer to the person. Maybe people might think I'm, I'm talking so much about business or any other things, but the mm -hmm. point is how people, there are thousands of people, millions of people, mm -hmm who want to give opportunity to other people to grow, mm -hmm. right? But if you don't build that one step of having a conversation with a person who you met, mm -hmm. it can be in a drinking bar, it can be in a coffee shop, mm -hmm. it can even be on the street, mm -hmm. you know? So with that kind of chances, that kind of interaction, that kind of chances to have that kind of communication with a person is not there. You are, you are out. Mm -hmm. And you cannot do anything on your own. You need that kind of team. You need, yes, sometimes you need somebody. You need somebody to pull you up mm. in order to get to the next step, right? Mm. So, um, my, my advice to people is: I mean, get a little bit more closer to people. A little, a little bit more. Japanese people are very supportive and very, very polite. Mm. Don't step back. Get a little bit more closer to them. Have a little bit more conversation with. Have a drink. Go to a bar. Go to a coffee shop have a little bit more conversation with a person and you don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. you can meet the most beautiful person in your, in your life or mm -hmm. maybe the most cooperative business person. Mm -hmm. You don't know. So, I mean, I would advise people to get a little bit more closer with people, have a little bit more conversation. Yeah, sometimes I was, that was it, I think a day before yesterday, I was reading an article mm -hmm. and um, yeah, there is a saying something like, I mean, there are sometimes you need to be a fool in order to fool the people that, you know? So mm -hmm. um, you need to have- what, what, what does that mean? It's, there are some time mm -hmm. you need to, I, I'll, put it, I'll put it in a different perspective. Okay. There are some times you need to be a little bit more closer to people to mm -hmm. have an, in order to know the soul of the person, okay. to know who that particular person is, mm -hmm. you know? There are some times you probably, in, in my restaurant, there's sometimes I do joke mm -hmm. that maybe somebody look at it, he's saying, oh, what are you, what are you? What kind of stupid thing, sorry for my word, what kind of stupid thing is this guy doing? But at the end of the day, you're looking at the positive part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you the interaction, the person remember, yeah, as Koda, you know, ah, that, that place, that place, you know. And that's what makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to create something to make a difference. Mm -hmm. with you need to stand out. Yeah. Make an stand. impression. That's the way, so, uh, yeah, so. So what, what about advice for people who are looking to come to Japan? Like whether it's from Africa, but primarily black people. Right. Africa or anywhere else in the world, America, the Caribbean, any advice in uh, terms of how, how to come here and you know, find your way? Um, one, in terms of uh, my advice might be if you happen to have a chance before coming to Japan to do a little bit of study of the language, yeah. take advantage of it. Okay because the language is the biggest issue and the biggest obstacle mm. to being successful in Japan. Okay. Because mm. now even people, we, there are so many people who speak English now in station, they have both English, Japanese and Chinese, but before mm. it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go to a bank, mm -hmm. everything has to be in Japanese. If you get stuck somewhere and you want to talk to a police officer, probably it might be in Japanese. Now they started having people uh, translators and all those kind of things, but mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's not all that easy. So mm -hmm. my advice to people might be, um, if you happen to get a chance, do the language. Probably if you come in and you happen to learn the language for a period of six months, even just a shorter period of six months, it will help also. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third point is, for me, I'm in the F&B industry. 
So I always, I always advise people. I mm. mean, if you are interested in the F and B, mm -hmm. that's the, the food, food and beverages. beverages right? mm -hmm. The hotel industry is is an amazing place to work. Okay, in Japan. In Japan, mm -hmm. every single job in Japan is a well paid job. Okay, you can be a cleaner mm. and be able to take your children to the best universities in Japan. Okay. Every single job is a well paid job. There's no this job, this job, this job. Mm. If you happen to have a chance to be in the food industry, I would advise you. Because one, we stand out. Mm. As a foreigner. As a foreigner. Mm. And as a black person. Okay. This is some of the things that we have to take advantage of. And there's so many restaurants and that have been, most of the top people have been foreigners. You know? Okay. So one, because you have the advantage of the language, to you have the relationship, you'll be able to get connected because one, Japanese people, the culture is not that kind of hugging people and all those kind of things. So once you go a little bit more one step of getting closer, hugging people, talking to them and all those kind of things. Yes, in the in the, in the F and B industry, in the food and beverage industry, sometimes you say we don't have even great people, you don't even have but it makes a difference. Mm. People do remember you I every see. I see. When they step out there, because they are not going to get that kind of chances anyway. So if you happen to have a chance in the uh, F&B or in the food and beverage industry, I think it's a huge market. I, I would advise people, especially black people, to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a huge market, mm -hmm. especially the hotel industry. And it's an amazing place to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and um, yeah, all the different places. Um, yeah, if you happen to have a chance of joining anything, um, yeah, but for me, I was spending all my time, most of my time in the, most, almost my entire time in Japan on the food industry. And um, mm. yeah, I would really recommend people that it's a job that you're never going to run out of um, whether anything goes, people are still going to eat, people mm. are still going to drink. Mm -hmm. And the money is good. Mm -hmm. So what else? Is there one lesson that you, you've learned since being in Japan? for the last 22 years? Um, What's the biggest lesson you've learned? To be a little bit more polite with okay. people. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to accept the opposite person uh, view. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that I realized in Japan is um, Japan is quite peaceful. But not because people doesn't want to react to things or anything. Mm -hmm. But people step back and reflect on things before they move. Okay. So, um, when we were young, I mean, um, yeah, sometimes you might find it difficult to understand some things, but what I really have helped me and have really learned in Japan is, uh, yeah, to be able to listen to the opposite direction, the opposite person's view. Mm. It could be on race, it could be on anything, any discussion or anything, but yeah, to be able to understand the opposite person what is that? What is, what is the point is that particular part, person trying to say? Mm. Step back. Reflect on it. Because by the time you move straight away, you might probably make a mistake. You okay. might get mm. it on the other side. Mm. The person, he said this, or he look at you like this. Maybe he look at you like that because it's the first time to experience a black person mm. or even to see a, 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 a guardian, mm. a foreigner, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, just step back, be a little bit more patient, reflect on it before you act. Mm. What about family life in Japan? What has that been like for you? Um, family life has been, um, it's up and down. Um, actually, I have two girls, mm, okay. um, and uh, especially in the industry that I'm working in, it's quite intense, you need mm. to, yeah. So. Um, to spend a little bit more, to spend much time, especially in our various countries. I mean, you family is is, is number one. Yeah. And uh, in Japan, it's, it's it's rather an opposite way. Okay. It's business, and then family. I see. It's, um, your wife is Japanese, right? My wife is Japanese. Mm -hmm. So, and most thing that normally that happen is most in companies in Japan. Now things are changing, mm -hmm. but 
most of the family issues, more the family the raising up of the kids and other things is mostly being done by the Japanese women. Mm -hmm. That I try as much as possible to avoid that because my children also need to have a little bit more experience of the foreign life mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. So um, it has been up and down. Mm -hmm. How is that balance? How do you balance that? It's quite difficult. Mm -hmm. To be frank with you, it's very, very difficult because um, you just imagine you work in a 12, 13, 14 hours. Yeah. And it takes you roughly about one hour to get home, in and out. Mm -hmm. And the kids have to leave at uh, 7 30 to school. So there are some times you just have to sleep in about four, five hours if only you want to wake up in the morning to be mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. before they go to school. The older one is 16 mm -hmm. and the younger one is 10. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so it's quite, it's quite, when, especially for the older one, I, by that time I, was, I wasn't in the, doing my own, mm -hmm. so I was able to spend more time with her. But the younger one since that day, especially since 2015 when I opened my first restaurant in mm -hmm. Tachikawa, it's been very, very, it's, it's, it's quite an affair. But we're trying, we're trying to, as much as possible, to spend more time with them, to get them a little bit more, to know the both sides of the culture, the foreign. Have they been to Africa before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, they've been to all of them, what, what including was my the, wife. What was the, the response like? It was amazing. My mm. older daughter didn't want to come back to Japan. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Um, I remember when we went to Ghana the last time, and... Uh, she would wake up, they would wake up around eight o'clock mm -hmm. and my sister's children were going to school. Yeah. They would go with them. Yeah. And, um, and they don't even speak, they, by that time they don't even speak English very well. Okay. So they would go with them and they wouldn't come back until around six o'clock okay. when the other kids are coming back. Mm -hmm. Because they were then doing after, after school program. They mm -hmm. would go, they, I mean, they would go out in the morning and we don't find them anywhere until they come back in maybe in the evening. And yeah, yeah so, and when we wanted to come back, the mm -hmm. other girl, there was, she was like, but that time she, the last time when she was, so that was almost about four years ago. Okay. And she was like, Daddy, can I stay here? <laughs> Be, no, one, the, what I realized is over mm -hmm. there, they have the freedom to move around. Mm. In Japan, before they even go to their friend's house, probably mm -hmm. they need to make a, a call to the parent I to see, find out. You know, so it's, it's quite different. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more free. That is the point. That is that is that is that okay. is the point. Yeah. What, what about the the culture with your wife? Uh, like maybe meshing both cultures. Mm -hmm. Was that easy to do? Um, one way or the other. Yeah. Because um, actually, I met her very young. I was also young. I met her at the age of uh, eighteen, nineteen. Okay. And uh, yeah, we've been together for almost uh, 16 years now, uh, mm. 17, 18 years now. Okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, we were, we were very young when we met. We did have a lot of conversation. Yeah, we still have a, quite a lot of conversation about it. She's, she's, she's quite an open person, so mm. uh, that's really helped me a lot. Okay, mm. where can people find you? Like if people are coming and they want to visit the restaurant, yep. right? Do you have like social media, yep. info? Um, yep. Where can they find you online? And um, where's the restaurant located? Actually, um, Didi Grande is, uh, is uh, in uh, Azabujuban, Azabujuban in Japan. Azabujuban mm -hmm. in Japan is uh, in, Tokyo, yeah? in Tokyo, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the exclusive area in Japan mm -hmm. um, in terms of security wise, in terms of um, living, life, living life and other things. I mean, it's surrounded by a whole lot of entertainment area. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's called, um, they can, we also have our Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. Instagram, and then uh, they can check us out on the homepage, um, ddgrande.com, mm -hmm. which okay. makes it more easier. Yeah, they can easily find us in there. Okay. And we will always welcome people to, and we have our bar team also over there, so yeah. We always welcome people to yeah join us. And um, it's English and Japanese. English and Japanese. Okay. So I'll be here to help out with the Japanese and then English. I'm chef also speaks very good English and Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. People are always welcome. All right. And I can I can hundred percent assure you that the quality of the food that we're providing is is, uh, is quite today. Top notch. Yeah. Guys, there you have it. This was Richie, and this is Didi Grande, located in Azerbaijan. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos on the Black experience across the globe. Until next time, bye for now. Keep in touch.